Hello and welcome to hobby vlog number 136. This week has been very busy for me in various terms. I've managed to get hobbying done as always and I know I often start by saying it's been very busy but this week I've been focusing a little bit more on Tournay, uh, the tournament organisation website that I write. Uh, I've got some people using it, which is nice, uh, and give me lots of ideas and suggestions. So I've been spending quite a lot of my evenings working on that rather than hobbying. Um, but that's still kind of in the hobby zone, isn't it? It's a tournament competition ranging website, mostly used for wargaming. So yeah, that's cool. But I did manage to finish this week the Sarissa Sawmill. So stop me freak, this one's for you. <laughs> I know you were sad last time that it wasn't done. Uh, so yeah, it has been one of those weeks. I've tried to put some time in, just five minutes here, five minutes there where I can, but it's been less easy, easy this week than normal. Uh, but anyway, onwards and upwards, it's a hobby, not a job, um, and it shouldn't become a chore. So uh, yeah, if you don't get time, I try to tell myself, well, that's just how it is, move on, next day maybe I will. Um, and that's about trying to have a positive mental attitude. So I hope you enjoy the vlog. I hope that you enjoy the progress that's made. Uh, there's some pretty cool stuff in there. Do let me know in the comments below what you think. I love to hear from you. I reply to every single one of your messages, so don't be shy. Um, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you again at the end. The next bit is actually probably the most fun bit. So um, what we're looking at doing now is basically just filling in the character and the detail on each of the miniatures. So um, I'll film a little bit and then crack on with the rest. But basically what you're looking at doing is picking a colour that you think is going to look good. So I've decided that that dude I was holding up there is going to have a green coat. Um, and I'd basically just paint my way across the miniatures, filling in details. So um, I end up with quite a lot of paint on my uh, wet palette. But that's, that's fine, isn't it? I'm going to just quickly adjust my camera angle because it's not all that great right now. So give me a second. Oh, that's a bit better. You can see that a little bit better, I think. So, so what I've gone for there, that was um, olive green. And yeah, so I'll just pick a cut out and I'll say, this dude is going to have a green coat. And before you know it, he's got a green coat. It's as simple as that. So, so yeah, so... The, there's not really a plan here as such, apart from creativity. This is where the, the creativity comes in for me, for the painting. So I don't really plan these sorts of things out. I just uh, go with the flow. Unless I've, unless I've got a, um, something that needs to be in, um, actually in, in uniform, and then I'll try to plan what the uniform might be. But most of the time, what I'm painting isn't in uniform. And uh, so yeah, you can just you can just kind of go a little bit nuts, um, and in this case, I'll also notice that I've missed some stuff, so I've missed a uh, a bit of leather here. So I'll make a note of that, and I'll come back to that at the end when I've finished doing all of my painting. I don't switch and jump. Um, if I spot something I've missed, then I just go, okay, I've missed that. I just need to remember that there's going to be a gun to be, or, or actually a, not a gun, a um, a holster to be painted on one of the miniatures, and then. When I come to tidying up um, and finishing up, I'll get that leather on there. So yeah, uh, also just to say, yeah, so it took me been a couple of days, um, it took me two days to paint the leather because the first night I did the normal leather and the second night I did the red leather. So that's also how I did it. So I'm gonna stop filming now because it's proven to be quite hard to hold this in shot, but you can see the point I'm making. And what I'll probably do is film again at the end of the night, show you where I've got to um, and uh, what colors I've picked for each of these little miniatures, but they're very fun to paint, I've a lot of fun. Well, there we are, I've painted the coats on all of the cowboys. I haven't touched the Indians because um, I would uh, spend a little bit more time thinking about those. But I have done a little bit of unity. So you can see that we've got, we've got four here with the red coats. So they're actually the law, so I've decided to go for the red coats. Um, and uh, we've got two, one light gray, one dark gray. These two are the same. And then the rest of the multicolored is a third faction. Unfortunately, I don't know the names off the top of my head. So apologies for that. Um, but yeah, just uh, slapped on some coat, some paint, uh, tried to um, make it interesting. But uh, mostly um, the one thing that I wanted to add is that I've not put on camera because it's very hard to put on camera, but when I'm painting, I move things around a lot. I hold it upside down, I hold it in all sorts of angles. And I was thinking while I was painting that it's very hard to show that on camera because I'm trying to keep it in shot. But when I'm not filming, I have the 
miniature held in all sorts of different positions just to get access and that's something that's really important i learned that it took a while to get confident enough to do it you don't have to hold it in one position hold it upside down turn it around um, so that your brush gets access to the bits you need to get access to um, and yeah just a little tip there that uh, i've been thinking about sharing and i realize i haven't shared yet so yeah there it is um, i will uh, be back for some more on them tomorrow there was some really interesting conversation on the blog um, after the previous footage, suggesting building up this area here a little bit more um, to reduce the amount of uh, resin. And actually, I thought about this, and that's a really good idea. Um, and so what I've decided to do is I've gone in my box of goodies, um, and I've got some roots, as you can see. This is actually an old bone, <laughs> which I found and dried um, and just some stones as well uh, and I'm going to stick these in place just using a dab of PVA and then do another pour um, and uh, just keep this keep this going keep the uh, momentum going so just a little dab of PVA on the bottom will be enough to hold it in place um, hopefully I might put a little bit more on the other one as well um, but the idea here is as I say to kind of build up um, a little bit of volume which will not need to be you have the um, have any of the uh, the resin and obviously this stuff is massively cheaper <laughs> than resin <laughs> yes so I'm going to put these in stick these down and then as I say I'll do another I'll do another resin pour this evening uh, once again only going to get one pour in today because uh, I'm looking after Rosie, but that's fine. Um, it's been a, a very fun day, mostly with her, so uh, can't argue with that, that, really. So there we are, just that one. There we are, so they'll be stuck down. By the time the resin gets to them, they'll be nice. They'll be held in place enough, so they won't lift. Um, there we are. So yeah, I will now do another resin pour. Uh, I've got to open another pot, because uh, uh, yeah, I've finished the first seven and a half kilograms or just under um, which uh, and I've got another one to open so I'll do that I'll probably pour four or five try to get as much of it done as I can I want to get this cracking on um, and I will uh, yeah I'll report back once once I've done a few more pours and show you where it's up to um, and uh, yeah I'm not going to show, do repetitive now um, it's just going to be a case of mixing and pouring I don't think there's anything else I'm going to add in, in underneath the water I'm pretty happy with it this is supposedly uh, just here past the uh, the kelp bed here it's supposedly how the boats get in so I can't do too much because I want that to be the little channel that the boats can come under um, so yeah I have to be a bit careful uh, I think I'm pretty happy with what I've got all right so next thing to do for this now this is glued on nice and securely is to come in with some um, of my terrain glue which is literally just a fancy name for watered down PVA and we're going to slap this on all over um, not m not mattering too much if I miss bits it should go in underneath the the uh, the tree to seal it in and we're going to slap a load of unfiltered unsifted sand on it I'm not not using my sifted sand for this so it's going to be a nice rough base so literally put your sand on you don't have to be fancy with this throw it on shake it off and there we are we've got a base so I'm going to do that on all of it as simple as that when that's dried I will then put another coat of the same glue over the top to seal it um, and then I'll decide whether I'm going to paint it or not um, but yeah I'll get that done off camera because it's the same thing over and over again and bring it back for the next step shortly so what I'm going to do now is I have my brown paint and uh, I'm going to make it into a wash and I do have a Rosie in the room who has been told to be quiet, but she is still talking. <laughs> so I'm just going to paint this on as a wash. Um, it's not going on as well as I hoped. So I might have to paint it on as a bit less than a wash. But this is basically the, the undertone that I want to have across this building. So, um, yeah, I'll get this painted on. Hopefully it'll work. And... Uh, show you what it looks like when it's done but if it doesn't work I will let you know I know Rosie I'm filming love yeah you see a bag good girl Rosie is off work off school sick today which means I'm off work which means I'm trying to do this 
but obviously never work with children or animals. <laughs> Do you want to say bye bye, Rosie? Bye bye. Bye bye. Right, let's. I'll, I'll come back in a bit and see whether this is actually going to work or not. This is a problem with using non plastic paints. It doesn't always go on as well as you want. Right, onwards. All right, that's dried. So now I'm going to come along, like I said, with some more of my watered down PVA and paint that over to seal that all in. Now, I've just read a comment on the previous blog, thank you Stopping Freak, who pointed out that I should have put used what I call terrain paint. Um, you'll find a link in the description of all of my videos for how I go about making that. But what happened is, and the reason why I haven't used it on this project, is it went off. Um, I didn't use it for so long that even with a good mix of um, like washing up liquid in it, it actually went mouldy and smelly and horrible and I tried to save it and I couldn't. Um, and I'm just doing that much less terrain like this, traditionally terrain, doing a lot of PVA, a lot of work with MDF and, and what have you, that I just didn't use it as much and I hate throwing things away. So, um, so I went for the, for the plain, the raw black paint on this. And uh, I was, as I've said in the comment uh, already, but I thought I'd verbalise it as well. I'm happy enough to do that on the, in this case, uh, mainly because I was aware that I was going to be coming along now and putting this coat over, which is going to make this a very hard wearing piece indeed. All this PVA and sand will basically turn to cement and be exceptionally hard. But it's a very valid point. Normally you'd be wanting to mix PVA in with your paint if you're going to be painting onto white foam and you're not going to be doing lots of textures and techniques over the top like this because it will make it much more hard wearing. Just raw house paint on white foam is a bad idea. So thank you very much Stomping Freak for that comment. Much appreciated. I really love all the comments I get on my videos and I do reply to all of them and I do take on board every suggestion or comment that you'd have to say nice things to me. Um, I love them all. Anything even like, why did you do that? That's not right. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I've not thought about it through or maybe I have and I just wasn't clear enough in explaining. So um, don't be shy. Do say stuff if you've got things to say. Um, but yeah, that, that's all I wanted to add. And while I've been explaining that, I've done all of that PVA work. So there we are. That's almost as if I planned it. So let that dry now, and then I'll bring you back for the next step very shortly. Our well, time has come to release this from its um, from its backing, from its uh, here. Cut it out, and then do the last few bits and pieces. So we'll just remove these clamps, and then we'll cut away, hopefully to a nice, um, hopefully to a nice border. So let's just move the shelf out of the way making lots of noise and then what we'll do we'll come along i've just got a sharp knife and gonna basically carve away with my sharp knife like that to get continue the bank down as it had started now i'm not particularly worried about about saving the offcuts for this so i don't mind if i do a little bit a little bit kind of brutally or whatever all that matters is that the bank is smooth enough so it doesn't look ugly. So this is going to be a bit, bit noisy, so I'll get this done. But that's basically my technique, just like that. And uh, when I've finished cutting, I will bring you back and uh, show you the next step, which is going to be putting some reeds on and finishing the bank. And then this pretty much will be done apart from a bit of dry brushing. There we are, that's done. I also actually ended up cutting from underneath. So holding it on the edge of the table and kind of sawing from underneath. And I found that was quite a good technique as well. So what we're going to do is now we're going to put the um, sand on the edges. So um, I have my bucket of gravel and my terrain glue here. So I'm going to do this in small stages because, well, I, I need to, otherwise it'll be really messy. So what we'll do is we're going to paint our terrain glue around the edge like this. And uh, this will also help to just seal the edges of the actual terrain. And then once we've got a section done, come along and do the old scatteroony to seal it. And then tap it and there we are we've sealed the edge 
So I'm going to do that all the way around both edges. Once that's dried, I will then paint it again with PVA, let that dry. Once that's dried, I will then paint it again and put the grass on. So I'll get all those processes done and then I'll come back for the final step, which is going to be putting some reeds and then doing some dry brushing and uh, then we're finished. So yeah, I just finished the edges now and bring you back for the next step. Once I finish the edges and we're doing the, the actual final steps. I've decided to do just a little bit more over here before I pour any more resin. <clears throat> so um, I've got, I actually knocked this tree which came loose sadly, uh, but I've got the uh, unsifted gravel from the back bank, which is the same stuff which is elsewhere on this. And uh, so yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use, I'm gonna lift that out of the way, um, lift these out of the way. I'm just gonna use some uh, raw PVA um, and spread it out over this area and stick things down to it. I've also brought some flock, um, it's just some green flock, which I'm gonna scatter in places. I'm actually gonna, as you can see from how far I'm spreading this, I'm actually gonna do a fair bit, which is why I've decided to hold off on the pour now. I'll try and get a pour done later today. Um, mainly because, yeah, I just think this is a bit bare and I think it would really work for having a little bit more variety, color and interest in this area. So uh, I will pop some music on and uh, get to it and uh, build this area up a little bit more with a little bit more interest. So I hope that hope you enjoy. Right now we are reaching the uh, end of this. As you can see, I've finished doing the edges. Uh, that's all nicely done in. One of the good things about doing this in the summer is it's very, very quick to dry. <laughs> so I've been able to do multiple processes a day, whereas in the winter, it'll be one a day because it will take that long to dry. So what I'm gonna do now is I've got my white chocolate um, here, which, uh, I'm, which is what I've been using to dry brush all of the buildings for this um, Western stuff. So we're just gonna come along and apply that dry brush all over the wood just to, uh, just to kind of tie it in with the rest of the builds and also to add a little bit of weathering. But one of the things I'm also gonna do is actually add a little bit to the dry brush, particularly to the path and most heavily to the steps, just to tie the dirt into the rest of the build as well because it's very it is chocolate brown which obviously is what I wanted to use but to tie it in if I use the same color as the dry brush on all of the dirt then that's going to look much much nicer isn't it now it's quite an old building it had a lot of use so it's going to be quite a heavy dry brush there's going to be a lot of dirt but once I've finished doing the dry brush which I'll probably do off camera because this is going to take a little bit longer than um, the normal because it's quite a big building. I'm going to come along and actually put some um, old tea leaves in which I've got here and I'm going to glue them in underneath the um, underneath the saw uh, and also I'm going to try to work out how I might end up actually um, with planks, some sawn planks which I don't think I'm going to stick on. I'm just going to make them as scatter. Now, I think probably I'll do that in a different video uh, because they'll be useful as scatter terrain and how I go about doing that will be useful rather than burying it inside as part of a different project. Um, but yeah, there we are. I've been talking so long, I've finished the dry brushing. <laughs> so yeah, so there we are, that's done. So what I'll do now is I'm going to come along with some PVA under here and stick the this um, dirt in underneath the sawmill. So I will get myself set up, get the glue, move the camera and show you how I'm gonna do that. 
Okay, so I have my watered down PVA, which is what I'm going to use to glue this down. And um, I have a hope that this is going to work because it might not very well. So what we're going to do is we're going to dab in, just with a brush, the watered down PVA. And I'm going to do one section at a time, so I'm not going a bit overboard. And underneath this saw, I think would, there would be wood chippings. So let's see if this wood, these wood chippings are going to work. I might have to tilt. I might have to put them here and then push them in while lifting the piece. So let's just do that and let them fall through. See if that's how to do it. So it's a little bit difficult to get access here. That's going to be the best thing, I think. It's good using recycled materials. I really like using tea bags and things, tea leaves and things like that because it's free. This is used tea leaves. I have made a cup of tea with these and then dried them extensively in the sun and now they're ready for use on terrain. So there we are. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work along the bottom um, and just adding these tea leaves just to make it look a little bit more used. Um, don't mind if they go off the side because they'll just fall off anyway. So. Uh, it's not, it's not the end of the world if you're not too accurate at this, but basically just try and press them down in there. When that's dried, what I'll do is I'll come along and I'll seal them with more PVA just so they definitely don't move. Um, but yeah, near enough, the last thing to do that. Final thing is going to be some uh, reeds, which I'll also do very shortly. I'll bring you along for that and then finishing off the roof. So we're really, really close to getting this done now. I've received another box of goodies, this time from Ollie at Broadsword who is awesome, and if you are in the EU and want to buy anything from Games Workshop, then you should go and buy from him. Uh, and uh, yeah, so what I've ordered is a bunch more Citadel contrast paints, quite a few more as you can see. Um, I went a bit nuts, I've really been enjoying them, um, just for the ease of what they do, uh, rather than anything else. I don't use them exclusively by any means, but they're quite useful. When you want them, they're really good. So I basically filled up on most of the ones that I've wanted for a little while. Um, which I will now start to make use of pretty much immediately, I think. So there we are, you can see quite a few of these. I'm not sure whether that's all of them. I can't see because of all the uh, peanuts. I also have a second set of the Easterling dice. Can, can't have too many dice, and certainly too many Easterling dices. Dices? Oh, but did I say that? <laughs> and then the last thing, let's pull this out. There we are. I didn't get any more paints, but the last thing is Defense of the North, the new game, the new book for, for Middle Earth, which I'm very excited about. I would really like to play through the whole of the campaign that's in this book. So let's get rid of this single use plastic. Here it is. So, it's time for the, you know what's coming. Games Workshop never lets you down when it comes to the smell of a new book. And talking about which, here's the campaign. Defense of the North campaign. The Battle of Dale. Defense of Mirkwood. Assault on Lothlorien. Awesome. So, yeah, I'm gonna have fun with this, I think. Uh, very much. It's right in the uh, in mine and Angela's wheelhouse. These are uh, dwarves versus uh, Easterlings. <laughs> so yeah, you can't beat that. Right, there we are. That's alright. Very pleased. As I say, go and check out his store if you're in the EU and you need to order anything. He's really reliable, th ships things well packed um, and good prices. Just can't recommend him highly enough. Um, and otherwise, I'm going to get to reading that and hopefully, relatively soon, uh, I'll get a... Uh, Okay, a few bat wraps, maybe even a maybe even the whole campaign on on film, but that's unlikely with the time we've got. Uh, but we love playing, and it seems like we've got a good reaction for the last bat rep from last week. So it seems like people like to watch our bat reps, which is very very cool actually. That's wonderful. So thank you everyone who watched that and commented. Really appreciate that. Hopefully, we'll bring this to you as well. I've put the extra glue on top of the. Um, of the shavings there and now I'm going to work on the last couple of steps which is put making some little kind of tufts 
of reeds or what have you just along uh, behind this little pile of stones here. I'm not going to put too many but I do think a little bit of a of that might be quite nice. What I've got here is an old paintbrush which has been used in a, in the house around the house and it's very old so what I do is I cut off a uh, section of the uh, of the bristles. This will have been used to apply wood stain or something so it's got a really nice coloration it doesn't look new you don't want to have used well I don't certainly don't use new um, new paintbrushes for this technique I know some people do I just think they don't look as good so what we'll do is we'll stand it up and then what I will do is grab some gravel just get a pinch of gravel and uh, bed that in around it which will act to grout the surrounds sorry that gravel's heavy <laughs> um, grout the surrounding of it and make sure that it doesn't fall over um, I might need to come in just a little bit and touch up the paint and the colouring around it um, once it's dried but uh, that's what we're going to do just grout it in there with some sand and come in afterwards and touch it up so there we are, that's how I go about making um, little bits of uh, uh, little bits of, of reeds or whatever. Um, I will maybe do a few more, not sure. I don't really want too many, I think that might even be enough. Maybe I'll do one more, put another one next to it here. There we are, put a blob of, paint, of glue down. Snip another couple of little sections out. And then grout around that as well. And that is, uh, that is how I do my do, do the reeds. I think the key is don't use new um, bristles because new bristles will just look too clean and they shouldn't look clean. So yeah, making it stand up can be tough. So that's a nice little reed bed. Can just put some more sand in just to grout it, help it to stand up a bit more. And there we are. So when that's dry, I'll come along and very carefully paint it. It is a bit of a pain. This you can use super glue if you want to. Um, that may be a better, it may have been a better idea indeed. <laughs> uh, but there we are. We've got some. Uh, we've got a final few bits of touches. So the last thing to do is going to be work on this plain white roof, and make that a bit tidier. So once that's dried, um, I'll get stuck on this next time I get a chance. All right, let's come to wrap this up. So I've got my chocolate brown paint, and what I'm going to do is dry brush over the top of these tiles that I've done to bring out the edges just like that this uh, pot of paint is very nearly finished which makes it perfect dry brushing material so just like that and it will add the character that I want to have for this without overwhelming the the pale shade which is what I wanted to go for for this particular roof so I'll get that done and then bring it back when I'm finished it's going to take a little bit I'm going to go over it probably two or three times to get it to exactly the right color that I want and the right definition and then I'll probably come along with some different colors so when I've done the brown and finished I'll put the camera back on and show you what I'm doing there we are having done that I'm now going to get some very watered down green and do some kind of like um, runoff. This is by a river, so you would have thought there would be some moss. I'm not going to go too crazy um, because I want it to be quite a relatively new looking roof, but I do think there would be some moss just for the being by the river and what I'm going to do as well is exactly the same green 
um, and I'll put that onto the walls as well in some places. So there we are, that'll do for that. So I'll now do a little bit of the same on the walls just to um, add a little bit of mould. And then I think we're done. So uh, yeah, finish the uh, fin fin finish this project, which is really, really cool. Very, very happy to have finished the uh, sawmill. Um, really not like how it looks. This is all now nice and dry and it's hard as a, hard as a rock, really, really good. <clears throat> very pleased with how that's turning out right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to build up the layers and the uh, textures on the base. I think the first thing I'm going to do is make use of this flock which I made, uh, clump foliage. Um, I'll try to remember to put a link to the video, but it's basically uh, blended up um, uh, dish sponge mixed with paint and water and PVA. It's really, really easy. So yeah, there's a video. I've done it. Uh, stolen from uh, Rubbish In, Rubbish Out. <coughs> Classic. Well, I've seen him do some more videos recently, but they're all computer game ones on that channel. But I'm going to leave the uh, colour as a as this kind of sandy colour for now just because um, I quite like the quite like the contrast that's going to be built up between the dark tree because the tree trunk is quite dark and then some lighter stuff going on underneath. Now one of the biggest challenges with this clump foliage is gluing it down. What you can see I'm doing is um, I'm using neat PVA and pressing it down into the neat PVA. That will hopefully hold it in place. And then once that's dried, what I'll do is I'll come along with watered down PVA and soak it with that and let that to dry. So this actually takes a little bit of time in terms of elapsed time because you need things to go completely dry. And sometimes actually you need to do more than one coat to get a good covering just because of how it doesn't really like to grab very much. So I'm going to build this up now. I won't film it all. Basically the technique you can see here uh, being done to fit the, put the foam onto the, onto the ground. Um, and then as I say, I'll let that dry and then I'll come back now and I'll turn the camera on when I do the at least the first set of washing it with a uh, with a with a watered down PVA and then I'll tell you how many times it takes because yeah it's not going to be just one but that way so yeah but it all look really nice so I'll build this up and I'll bring it back for the next step shortly so here's a little bit of an in progress for you you can see I've poured quite a lot more resin and uh, we've got over to the shallows it started to creep in up over there which is what I was uh, filling in and decorating last time um, but yeah, I've taken a pause. There's a couple of reasons why I've taken a pause just for the last couple of days. Uh, one of which is, if we pan here, past my awesome bridge diorama, I've actually used up all of the smaller containers of the resin that I bought. So that's all gone. Um, and if we pan back very, very carefully, over here you can see this is the remainder of the resin. So quite a large pot, which is going to be quite hard to pour. So. One of the reasons why I've stopped is that I'm trying to work out what I need to do to make sure I don't spill it everywhere and make sure I keep it under control. But the other reason is, is I've remembered that I was going to put a little jetty, a little pier coming out here to this mound. So the, the uh, boats would come in um, on this side. So yeah, so I'm going to do that next. So I'm going to make a little wooden jetty. It's not going to be completely and utterly derelict, but it's also not going to be all that, um, <clears throat> all that solid. So um, I'll, obviously bring you along for that. I'm going to start that in the next couple of days and I'll turn the cameras on. Um, but yeah, just a little pause, but really pleased to be cracking on and it's not a stop. It was just considering how I was going to do this. Um, and also, as I say, I'm thinking about how I'm going to pour the rest of the resin. But I'm very pleased with this area. I think it's looking really, really nice. Very, very happy that I put so much more effort into this rather than leaving it plain. I think it's going to be really, really cool to look at with those trees coming out and what have you. Um, and the whole rest of it is looking brilliant as well. I'm very, very happy, actually. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm going to make a jetty. So that's the next thing to do. I will uh, turn the camera on, like I say, show you what it looks like. Um, so, yeah, that'll be the next thing for this project. Well, another week and... Uh Another week of almost no progress. I don't know, I thought this would grow a bit faster. But I'm going to keep at it. I'm not going to give up. Keep watering it regularly. I've got one here that's basically given up the ghost. But everything in all the other pots is still alive. Though just not growing very well. This is the biggest one. Got another one over here. 
and this one as well unfortunately has given up the ghost so there's two down two pots down but three pots remaining but yeah it's just not growing at all i don't know what i'm doing wrong but uh yeah just keep at it hopefully maybe they'll suddenly burst into life it's uh it's a bit strange well, it's been a couple of days since i've looked at this which is no way to get through a project fast but that's life um, this is the first time I've come back to it and I'm doing the first um, uh, edition of watered down PVA. Now you can see that it's stuck in place but the foam is still very loose um, and would definitely get damaged if you're gaming with it or even just fall apart anyway if it got knocked. So what we're going to do is this is the um, terrain glue watered down PVA with a little dab of Washing, li washing up liquid or dish soap, depending on where you are in the world. Um, that's the flow improve and also prevent things from going mouldy. And I'm just going to paint this over every single one and then let it to dry and then check again. And probably I'll have to do this process two or three times to get these tough enough, hard enough to be hard wearing enough to not completely destroy as soon as you look at them. So again, like I said before, it's not a process for making quick terrain you know you're not going to ship this in a day but uh, it does work well and uh, yeah a little bit of patience sometimes is a good thing isn't it so uh, yeah so I'll just carry on doing this and uh, this is by far not the last step on this process but I want this finished before I do the next step so I'm just going to carry on doing this and I will let you know how many applications I'll try to remember to let you know how many applications it takes before I'm happy with it being hard wearing enough. So yeah, onwards, let's get this done. Well, there we are. That was the week that was. And uh, again, as always, I stand here a little bit surprised at how much I did get done. And there is a lesson there every week for me to just roll with it because often I'll feel like I've had a pretty rubbish week in terms of productivity, which I honestly did this week. And then I'll put this together and I'll be like, well, hang on a second. I did this and I did this and I did this look at how good the lake works and I've actually managed to do the dog or deux and I finished off this project and the one thing that did go badly for me this week which I need to hold my hand up and I want to say is I've not done well on my 22 minute challenge if you don't know what that is I paint 22 minutes a night every night at least and this week I've missed it so far three nights in a row and that's not good because it's so easy once you get out of a habit to just stay out of the habit and the habit is what keeps you going so just do it anyway i've got very very good excuses but not very good reasons for not having done it so anyway there we are there's my uh, little homily <laughs> i really hope you've enjoyed this video if you've made it this far then i re really appreciate it and thank you very much uh, do let me know in the comments below what you've thought uh, which project you've enjoyed the most uh, and uh, yeah let me know i love reading all your comments and i reply to them all i'll wrap up by saying as I currently always do. Hopefully this won't have to be said for very much longer, but who knows? I really hope anyone out there that's uh, affected directly or indirectly by the horrible war in Ukraine, thoughts go out to you. I hope you're doing okay. And I hope that uh, this does stop soon. It's just horrendous. Um, and uh, yeah, as I always say, please do stay healthy, stay safe and stay well.